Good morning. It's good to have you all here and good to be with you here this morning as we celebrate the festival of the Holy Trinity. There are just a few announcements that I would like to draw to your attention before the service begins. Uh, the first is that coming up this week on Wednesday, we will be having our elders meeting at 630 and our church council at 7. Uh, according to the Constitution, uh, at least as I read it, uh, if you are an officer of the congregation, uh, you are on the council. So you may have gotten some emails from me uh, just reminding you about this upcoming meeting. So please do put that in your schedule. This week we will have an elders meeting at 630 and church council meeting uh, probably in here at 7 o'clock on Wednesday. Um, other than that, uh, there is an announcement here that the bulletins will be printed on Wednesday this week, not Thursday. So just make sure of that, that if you would like an announcement in the bulletin next week to have it into the church office by Wednesday at 4, that would be very helpful. Uh, and lastly, this one is for if there are members of Grace who are on the live stream right now, uh, Grace will be having a voters meeting next Sunday at 7 o'clock. Uh, and there will be a potluck before at 6. So members of Grace, if you're on the live stream right now, there will be a voters meeting next Sunday at 7. Our opening hymn this morning is hymn 906, hymn 906. <laughs> This morning we follow divine service setting three, beginning on page 184. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Beloved in the Lord, let us draw near with a true heart and confess our sins unto God our Father, beseeching him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, to grant us forgiveness. Our help is in the name of the Lord, 
who made heaven and earth. I said, I will confess my transgressions unto the Lord, and you forgave the iniquity of my sin. O Almighty God, merciful Father, I, a poor, miserable sinner, confess unto you all my sins and iniquities with which I have ever offended you and justly deserved your temporal and eternal punishment. But I am heartily sorry for them and sincerely repent of them. And I pray you of your boundless mercy and for the sake of the holy, innocent, bitter sufferings and death, of your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, to be gracious and merciful to me, a poor, sinful being. Upon this, your confession, I, by virtue of my office as a called and ordained servant of the word, announce the grace of God unto all of you. And in the stead and by the command of my Lord Jesus Christ, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Psalm 29. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Ascribe to the Lord, O heavenly beings. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. The voice of the Lord is over the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord over many waters. The voice of the Lord is powerful. The voice of the Lord is full of majesty. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedars. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. He makes Lebanon to skip like a calf and Syrian like a young wild ox. The voice of the Lord flashes forth flames of fire. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the deer give birth and strips the forests bare, and in his temple all cry glory. The Lord sits enthroned over the flood the Lord sits enthroned as king forever. May the Lord give strength to his people. May the Lord bless his people with peace. Glory be to the Father and to the Son and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. Ascribe to the Lord the glory due his name. Worship the Lord in the splendor of holiness. Lord, have mercy upon us. Christ, have mercy upon us. Lord, have mercy upon us. Glory be to God on high. And on earth peace, goodwill toward men. We praise thee, we bless thee.
the Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty and everlasting God, you have given us grace to acknowledge the glory of the eternal trinity by the confession of a true faith and to worship the unity and the power of the divine majesty. Keep us steadfast in this faith and defend us from all adversities. For you, O Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, live and reign one God now and forever. Amen. You may be seated. The Old Testament reading for the festival of the Holy Trinity is from Isaiah chapter 6. In the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord sitting upon a throne, high and lifted up. And the train of his robe filled the temple. Above him stood the seraphim. Each had six wings. With two he covered his face, and with two he covered his feet, and with two he flew. And one called to another and said, Holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. And the foundations of the threshold shook at the voice of him who called, and the house was filled with smoke. And I said, Woe is me, for I am lost, for I am a man of unclean lips, and I dwell in the midst of a people of unclean lips. For my eyes have seen the King, the Lord of hosts. Then one of the seraphim flew to me, having in his hand a burning coal that he had taken with tongs from the altar. And he touched my mouth and said, Behold, this has touched your lips. Your guilt is taken away and your sin atoned for. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. The epistle is from Romans chapter 11. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord? Or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I invite you to stand for the reading of the Holy Gospel. The Gospel according to St. John, the third chapter. Glory be to thee, O Lord. Now, there was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. This man came to Jesus by night and said to him, Rabbi, we know that you are a teacher come from God. For no one can do these signs that you do unless God is with him. Jesus answered him, Truly, truly, I say to you, unless one is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Nicodemus said to him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter a second time into his mother's womb and be born? Jesus answered, Truly, truly, I say to you, Unless one is born of water and the Spirit, he cannot enter the kingdom of God. That which is born of the flesh is flesh, and that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. Do not marvel that I said to you, you must be born again. The wind blows where it wishes, and you hear its sound, but you do not know where it comes from or where it goes. So it is with everyone who is born of the Spirit. Nicodemus said to him, How can these things be? Jesus answered him, 
Are you the teacher of Israel? And yet you do not understand these things. Truly, truly, I say to you, we speak of what we know and bear witness to what we have seen. But you do not receive our testimony. If I have told you earthly things and you do not believe, how can you believe if I tell you heavenly things? No one has ascended into heaven except he who descended from heaven, the Son of Man. And as Moses lifted up the servant in the wilderness, so must the Son of Man be lifted up, that whoever believes in him may have eternal life. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. For God did not send his Son into the world to condemn the world, but in order that the world might be saved through him. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise be to thee, O Christ. On Trinity Sunday, it is our custom to confess our faith using the words of the Athanasian Creed, which you will find in your bulletin. Uh, there are parts that are marked L and C. I'll be the L if you would join me as the C, C for congregation. And then there are some parts marked men, women, or all. And you'll see that as we get there. Let us confess our faith using the words of the Athanasian Creed. Whoever desires to be saved must, above all, hold the Catholic faith. Whoever does not keep it whole and undefiled will without doubt perish eternally. And the Catholic faith is this, that we worship one God in Trinity and Trinity in unity, neither confusing the persons nor dividing the substance. For the Father is one person, the Son is another, and the Holy Spirit is another. But the Godhead of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit is one, the glory equal, the majesty co-eternal, such as the Father is, such is the Son, and such is the Holy Spirit. The Father uncreated, the Son uncreated, the Holy Spirit uncreated. The Father infinite, the Son infinite, the Holy Spirit infinite. The Father eternal, the Son eternal, the Holy Spirit eternal. And yet there are not three eternals, but one eternal. Just as there are not three uncreated or three infinites, but one uncreated and one infinite. In the same way, the Father is almighty, the Son almighty, the Holy Spirit almighty. And yet there are not three almighties, but one almighty. So the Father is God, the Son is God, the Holy Spirit is God. And yet there are not three gods, but one God. So the Father is Lord, the Son is Lord, the Holy Spirit is Lord. And yet there are not three lords, but one Lord. Just as we are compelled by the Christian truth to acknowledge each distinct person as God and Lord, so also we are prohibited by the Catholic religion to say that there are three gods or lords, the Father is not made, nor created, nor begotten by anyone. The Son is neither made nor created, but begotten of the Father alone. Thus there is one Father, not three fathers. One Son, not three sons. One Holy Spirit, not three Holy Spirits. And in this Trinity, none is before or after another. None is greater or less than another. Therefore, whoever desires to be saved 
must think thus about the Trinity. But it is also necessary for everlasting salvation that one faithfully believe the incarnation of our Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, it is the right faith that we believe and confess that our Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is at the same time both God and man. He is God, begotten from the substance of the Father before all ages. And he is man, born from the substance of his mother in the faith. Perfect God and perfect man, composed of a rational soul and human flesh, equal to the Father with respect to his divinity, less than the Father with respect to his humanity. Although he is God and man, he is not two, but one Christ. One altogether, not by confusion of substance, but by unity of person. For as the rational soul and flesh is one man, so God and man is one Christ who suffered for our salvation, descended into hell, rose again the third day from the dead, ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of the Father, God Almighty, from whence he will come to judge the living and the dead. At his coming, all people will rise again with their bodies and give an account concerning their own deeds. And those who have done good will enter into eternal life, and those who have done evil into eternal fire. This is the Catholic faith. Whoever does not believe it faithfully and firmly cannot be saved. You may be seated as we continue with the hymn of the day, hymn 498.
Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God. How unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. You may be seated. This was the conclusion that St. Paul reached at the end of one of the harder portions of the New Testament in, in really the, the whole scriptures. For some time before our text, actually beginning in, in chapter 9, Paul had been considering what we call the, the doctrine of election. The scriptures teach that God, in his mercy and out of pure grace, chose us for salvation by faith in Christ. And, and not just us, but everyone who believes in Jesus is chosen by God. His electing us is the cause of our salvation, hence this doctrine of election. However, we do witness, and unfortunately with increasing frequency as of late, that there are people who once were Christians, but then renounce the faith. Why does God allow that? Or rather, why has he so far preserved us? We who, if the devil attacked us just right, might easily fall away as well. Ultimately, we don't know all the answers, and we humbly submit in faith to what God has revealed. Namely, that he chose us for salvation before the foundation of the world, and has brought it about through Christ Jesus. Now, this idea of submitting in faith to what God has revealed, even if we don't understand it, is something that comes up again today. During Holy Week, we talk about the mystery of how bread and wine can also be the true body and blood of Christ. It is what the scriptures teach, and, and by the Holy Spirit, what we believe, even if we don't understand. And today, it's the Trinity. Normally on church holidays, you know, the white signifies a church holiday here. Normally on church holidays, we have an event to celebrate, to remember, to confess. But today... It's a doctrine. Today we celebrate the identity and work of the true God, the triune God. The scriptures teach and we confess that we worship one God who exists eternally in three co-equal persons, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Although the reality of the Trinity confounds us, yet we confess from scripture that it is both true and that this triune God acts for us. Now, let's get it out of the way, and we'll say it right now. Christians do not believe in three gods. And for us who, who have heard and, and believe the scriptures, this, this goes without saying. We, we know this. Still, Christians have been charged with this for 2,000 years. And even today, Muslim and Jewish critics of Christianity, even some Christians called uh, oneness Pentecostals, they will say that we worship more than one God and therefore do not worship the true God. And they charge us with this because, as our Lord said just a few weeks ago, they have not known the Father nor me. We do admit that the word Trinity, not in the Bible, we admit that. It was proposed by a Christian named Theophilus who lived in the second century. And when he used that word, it wasn't to express some new idea that he had come up with, but to explain what the scriptures teach about God and what Christians have always believed. The scriptures are clear. We are to worship the one and only God, they say, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. The scriptures also teach that this one God exists eternally in three persons. And that's why in scripture, God is sometimes referred to in the plural. Last week, we, we heard about the Tower of Babel. And we heard God say this. Come. Let us go down there and confuse their language so that they may not understand one another. But if we go back further, back to creation, to Genesis chapter 1, 
God also said this, let us make man in our own image after our likeness. Sometimes in scripture, we also find things being repeated three times when talking about God. For example, today we heard, holy, holy, holy is the Lord of hosts. The whole earth is full of his glory. The angels speak holy for each person of the Trinity, and yet at the end, the whole earth is full of his glory. And it happened again, and this occurred to me as we were saying the psalm. Uh, if you look at the psalm, Psalm 29, if you look at verses 1 and 2, it says, ascribe to the Lord, ascribe to the Lord, ascribe to the Lord. And then 3, 4, and 5, the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord. And then 7, 8, and 9, the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord, the voice of the Lord. Why three? Interesting. Also in the benediction, we have another threefold pattern of repetition. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. One, the Lord, for each person. We worship one God who exists eternally in three persons, the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. And the creeds that we confess, they, they help us to put this all together. All three persons are God. None is greater or less than another. None is before or after another. None is more God than the others. All three are God, all three are Lord. We can and we should pray to all three, but there is still only one God. Our Lord himself spoke this way, I and the Father are one. And for the last number of weeks, we've been hearing about the Holy Spirit, whom the, the Father would send in Jesus' name. And so we have the, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, but only one God. And we all remember Jesus' words right before he ascended. Go, therefore, and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And notice that Jesus only said name once. Now, even though we hear this kind of talk every year, the, the Sunday after Pentecost is always Trinity Sunday. We, we hear this every year. We, we all learn about this in the catechism. And then from time to time, it comes up in Bible study. But it still remains difficult for us to, to grapple with. And that's okay. Because, in fact, the, the plain truth is that we will not understand the Trinity this side of the resurrection. It flies in the face of, of human reason. That's why people deny the Trinity, because they don't understand it. It flies in the face of reason, and the old Adam hates the idea. The Trinity is impossible to understand. It must be believed. Thanks be to God that he has granted this faith to us. And the question for us today is that given the difficulty with trying to understand the Trinity and then trying to, trying to teach the Trinity, try writing a sermon on, Trinity, on the Trinity, it's not as easy as you think. Uh, why confess it then? Why, why believe this and talk about this? Why will our services always begin with a Trinitarian invocation and end with a Trinitarian benediction? I can think of two reasons. The first is, it's what the Bible teaches. The, the scriptures are filled with references to the Trinity, even all over the Old Testament. It says in the Psalms, and, and we should know this one because we say it like four times during church here, uh, Psalm 33 by the word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of his mouth, all the host. Now, the word of the Lord, we know from Christmas Day, John chapter 1, that the word of the Lord, well, that's code for Jesus. And you might know that in Hebrew, the word for breath and spirit are the same word, ruach. And so this verse talks about both Jesus and the Holy Spirit. And David confessed in his last words, he said, the Spirit of the Lord speaks by me. His word is on my tongue. And even Abraham, if you go all the way back to Abraham, he recognized Christ 
when Jesus came with two angels to promise the birth of Isaac. We confess our faith in the Trinity, even though it's difficult, first because it is how God has revealed himself to us in Scripture. He is one God in three persons. And the second reason that we confess this is because this triune God is himself always active at work for our benefit. It says in Ezra, the hand of our God is for good on all who seek him. To the Father, we ascribe the work of creation. He is the one who created the heavens and the earth, who knits us together in our mother's wombs. Moreover, the Father is the one who provides for us, who defends us against all evil. In time, God the Father sent his eternal Son into the flesh for us. The Son was conceived by the Holy Spirit and born of the Virgin Mary. He took upon himself our same human flesh. He took our sin into himself and made the payment for it on the cross. Now the Son of God is risen from the dead and lives and prays for us at the right hand of the Father. He rules over all things for the benefit of his bride, the church. The Holy Spirit proceeds from the Father and the Son, and it is his work that we're here today. The Spirit is the author of the Scriptures. He is the one who speaks by the mouths of the prophets and apostles. He works through the word to create faith in our hearts and sustains us in it until we die. And this is a lot to take in and a lot to confess. The standing for the Athanasian Creed takes a little bit longer. We do confess every week in the Creed. But beyond these words, the, the Trinity is hard to understand. It's impossible, really. It must simply be believed. And we thank God this week for revealing himself to us. He was not content to just be a mystery out there, but has revealed himself to us in love. And beyond just revealing himself to us, he also acts for us out of that same love. He creates and sustains us. He has redeemed us with his blood. And he has called us and kept us in this true faith. Although we anticipate understanding this all better in the resurrection, for now it is best to keep in step with St. Paul, to find rest and comfort in what God reveals to us in his word. Oh, the depth of the riches and wisdom and knowledge of God, how unsearchable are his judgments and how inscrutable his ways. For who has known the mind of the Lord or who has been his counselor? Or who has given a gift to him that he might be repaid? For from him and through him and to him are all things. To him be glory forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Offertory is written for us on page 192. I invite you to stand as we sing. Let us pray for the whole church of God in Christ Jesus and for all people according to their needs. Lord of hosts, your ways are inscrutable and your judgments unsearchable. Through your word, give us an ever-growing understanding of the depths of your riches, wisdom, and knowledge 
that we may glorify you forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, you gave your only Son, that whoever believes in him should not perish but have eternal life. Bless the work of missionaries as they carry this gospel to the ends of the earth, that many may hear of your love in your Son and be saved through him. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, have mercy on those who would deny the new birth of water and the Spirit to infants and children. Open their eyes and hearts to the fullness of your grace, that they would no longer hinder these little ones from being born again and seeing your kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, we give thanks for those who have served our nation through military service, and we remember with gratitude those who gave their lives for us and for the cause of freedom. Help us to honor their sacrifice by using our liberty responsibly. Keep safe all who travel, bless our nation, and help us to protect and increase the privileges we have for those who follow us, looking always to you, from whom these privileges come. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, uphold the shut-ins of our congregation and those whom we hold in our hearts, and all who suffer in our midst by your truth, that since you are at their right hand, they cannot be shaken. Gladden their hearts, cause their tongues to rejoice, and make their flesh dwell in hope. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of hosts, take away our guilt and atone for our sin by touching our unclean lips with Christ's cleansing body and blood, that we may not be lost, but abide in your holy presence forever. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. All these things, and whatever else you know that we need, grant us, dear Father, for the sake of him who died and rose again, and now lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We pray. Lord God, Heavenly Father, we give thanks for the joy and blessings that you have granted Jim and Ellie during the 50 years of their marriage. Assist them always by your grace, that with true fidelity and steadfast love, they may ever honor and keep their promises, grow in love toward you and for each other, and come at last to the eternal joys that you have promised. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. We continue with the service of the sacrament, beginning on page 194. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks unto the Lord our God. It is meet and right so to do. It is truly meet, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you. Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God, who with your only begotten Son and the Holy Spirit are one God, one Lord. In the confession of the only true God, we worship the Trinity in person and the unity in substance of majesty co-equal. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name evermore praising you and saying, Holy, Holy, Holy Lord God of Sabaoth, heaven and earth are full of thy glory. Hosanna, 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 Blessed is he, blessed is he, blessed is he that cometh in the name of the Lord. Hosanna, 
Hosanna, Hosanna. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the same night on which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always. O Christ, thou Lamb of God, that takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Christ, thou I invite the congregation to stand for the dismissal. Now this, the true body and blood of your Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, strengthen and preserve you in the true faith unto life everlasting. Depart in peace. Amen. We continue by singing the Nunc Dimittis. Thou hast prepared before the 
place of all people, a light to lighten the Gentiles, and the glory of thy people Israel. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Ghost, as it was in the beginning, is now, and ever shall be, world without end. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good, and his mercy endureth forever. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift. And we implore you that of your mercy, you would strengthen us through the same, in faith toward you, and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The Lord be with you. Bless we the Lord. Thanks be to God. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen, amen, amen. You may be seated as we continue with our closing hymn, hymn 953.